127 times 89. Let's ask a 20 billion parameter model. Wrong. The answer is 11303. It's not confused, it's confident, and it's wrong. Let's try again. Same model, same prompt. Look, the answer is now 11303. It's correct. I added an expert, not a neural expert, but a virtual expert, a Python expert. So if we just level set for a second, in the past older models such as Llama 2, Llama 3, GPT-2, GPT-3, they were all known as dense models. And basically with a dense model, every parameter is active and available during inference, which makes it super expensive. Now in more modern models such as GPT or SS20B, which is the one I just ran a second ago, it is known as a mixture of experts model. And in a mixture of experts model, you have a pool of experts. In GPT TOSS's case has 32 experts per layer and only four experts are available at any particular time and a router decides which expert to activate at any point in time. The rest of the experts sit idle. And that's the efficiency trick. That's why you can have a really large model such as GP2 ss 20 b but run with the efficiency level of a very, very small model. But who says we need a neural expert in the first place? Why can't we just have a tool built into the model. Why can't we have a Python expert that is able to calculate the math using actual code? Nothing stops us from doing that. And that is exactly what you saw in the demo that I did earlier. And what makes that possible is what I showed in one of my earlier videos is that for a mixture of expert models, that attention is the absolute key thing for routing to different experts. What effectively happens is attention will pretty much tell the model you need, based on this context, to send this to this expert. But if attention is able to do that routing based on the numbers, two plus three goes to expert eight, for example, then who says it needs to go to expert eight? We can just send it to my new Python virtual expert. So let me show you what this looks like. So this time I'm gonna run this through my Lazarus tool and we're do gonna do a comparison in verbose mode of the sum 127 multiplied by 89 equals, and we're gonna look at what the layers come back with. So if we look at the layers of the GPT OSS model for a second, and we go from uh, layer zero all the way down to layer 23, as I said, GPT OSS is a 24 layer model there. Um, as part of every layer, there's a classification of the task that w happens. Now, as you can see here, that as early as level zero, it knows, it knows that this is a multiplication task. The confidence is locked in. It knows that this is multiplication. So what do I do at this point? At this point, I just hijack it and I send it off to my virtual expert. There are two methods that you can utilize on this is we can just train the router. So we can actually train the router to route to different experts at that point and change the model. Or in this particular case, we can hijack. Both techniques work equally. So rather than sending that off to expert A, but when we see a multiplication task, we just send it off to our Python expert. And as you can see here, with the expert, it gets the answer right, 11303. Without the expert, 11263. And then it gets confused and then it starts wondering if it's prime, et cetera. But here, we're locked in. It knows the answer because it's one called the Python code. And this works for any math that we can do large multiplications. So if we do 999 multiplied by AAA, and you can see it's gonna come back with the right answer because it's doing a calculation. It's not doing weird lookup stuff. The transformers do an approximation. It's gonna get the calculation right. And there we go. It comes back with 887112. And this time we'll do 456 multiplied by 789. And there you go. You can see it comes back with 359784. If I want to, I can even do division. And there you go. It comes back with a very accurate answer of 578.2408111111. Now, just to prove that, we'll run that through an actual calculator. And there you go. You can see the answer is exact. And for a model to do that, it would either need to expand an awful lot of tokens and be really smart, or it'd have to do a tool call. And you can see here, it's just doing it natively with the virtual expert. If we think about this for a second, this isn't a hack for fixing math. It's a new primitive. Mixture of expert writers are already doing expert selection. They classify the task and they pick the experts. We're just expanding that pool to include non-neural experts such as Python. And that expert doesn't need to be limited to math, for example. This could literally be anything. We could have a calculator like we just showed there, but we could also have a web search. We could have a database. We could have code execution. We could have memory lookup. It doesn't really matter. We can just add as many experts as we like as long as the classification task can 
understand what it is, and then consistently route it to the correct expert. And then you're probably thinking to yourself, is that super useful? And the answer is yes. So as a bit of a teaser to an upcoming video, I took GPT OSS 20B and basically I removed a bunch of experts. In fact, what I did is I analyzed all the hot experts in the model and really just loaded up the experts that were most frequently used. And one of the things I did is I removed the math experts. And if we look at how this runs, you can see here it runs with 424 experts. You can see it's getting the answers right. The capital of France is Paris. Here is Fibonacci and it's written out a Fibonacci function. You see the memory there, eight, eight gig of memory compared to sort of 16 gig of memory before. But look, the problem is it's getting the math wrong. Two plus two is equal to three. So same model, but this time with my virtual expert. Again, same thing, 424 experts. You see it's gonna calibrate the math routing at the beginning there on load so that it can send things to the virtual expert. And again, this works as before, capital of France is Paris and there's Fibonacci, etc. But look, it's now getting the math correct. <laughs> 127 times 89 is 11303. Uh, 1245, it can even do division, it can do multiplication, and now it's getting the math right. So what I'm now running with is a model that's running nearly half the amount of experts and running in, in, in about 8.7 gigs worth of memory as opposed to nearly 16 gigs worth of memory. But my virtual experts are doing the math. Pretty cool, right? And if you wanna see how I actually do it for a second, here is the original script. So you can see here, this is the one where it was getting the math wrong. You see low GPT OSS light optimize. I'm just using MLX LM models here. So I'm using a GPT OSS model in this case. So I'm, I, there is nothing, nothing weird that I'm doing in this case. I am literally just um, loading the model as normal. So if, if we look at the virtual expert version here for a second, I've introduced this concept of a virtual MOE wrapper. It's actually as part of my Lazarus introspection modules there, but um, again, I've open sourced all of this code, you can just look at it. But the key thing that I do here is I go through the existing mixture of experts layer, and then I patch the layer routers. You see, I just go and look for the routers there, and then I patch it uh, with my version. So by introducing this uh, idea of a virtual expert registry, there's my math expert plugin, so I can just extend it and add other ones. And then I just create this virtual MOE wrapper. So as far as the model's concerned, it just looks like any other expert. And then I run a bit of a calibration here just so that the routers know to be able to handle the math there. And then from that point on, when I do generations, etc., it's just going through the main routers. So if we look down here for a second, when I do inference, I'm just doing inference exactly as I would for any other model. So as you can see, that is a GPT OSS model cut down pretty much in half but using a virtual expert in the middle of the architecture to handle the math just by retraining the router. So how does this compare with traditional tool calling? Well, if we think of traditional tool calling, tool calling happens external to the model. So you do your token generation, you do your parsing, you realize that you need to do a tool call, and then the model stops, and then you go off, do the tool call, and then you inject the result back in, but you have to run through all of the layers. But with the idea of a virtual expert, I keep it native to the architecture. I don't need to go down all the other layers. I can go and do my math calculation and do whatever within the architecture. That is super powerful. That gives us native models. And then as you saw with the GPT OSS example, one of the things I'm able to do is start carving out experts that are doing things like math and then injecting in reliable experts that get it right. So we don't ever get ourselves into this bad math situation. The problem of bad math is effectively solved natively within the architecture. And actually as a side benefit, we can bring the size of the model down, but I will cover how I do the uh, the carving out of experts in a future video. But I but I hope this concept of virtual experts and this hybrid architecture kind of uh, persists and inspires some people because I, I, I genuinely think we can get smaller, smarter models that are more reliable and we can do some exciting things with it. And as you saw there, this was the exact same GPT OSS model, just with a little bit of tweaking. And the results were stunning because the model itself got it wrong. Now, in the kind of real versions with the chat templates, 
then what's going to happen is you're going to do chain of thought and then chain of thought is going to rewrite with a bunch of tokens and it'll eventually get the model correctly. But if I'm not doing chain of thought there, the model just, it just gets it wrong. And then with the division example, it's got absolutely no chance of getting that right. It's either just going to expend a ton of tokens or you're going to have to make a tool call. But with the virtual expert, it's always going to get it right. So as I said, 768 experts, 20 billion parameters, and the math is wrong. One virtual expert with Python, and it gets it right. And the best thing is, the model don't know the difference.